As you can see in this picture, we're depicting that we have the chair, which is the operator chair, and we also have on the left side, we are showing the dredge pack computer, which is your positioning software. On the right computer is your HMI, stands for Human Machine Interface, that's your graphical computer. This picture here shows you your starboard side chair console. Uh, you can see you have a starboard swing winch joystick that goes left to right. On the left console you have your ladder up and down joystick uh, which actually goes forward and back as opposed to the swing winch joysticks that go left to right. Pushing the ladder joystick forward, the ladder will go down. Uh, it also is a friction style joystick, meaning it will stay wherever you leave it and the ladder will continue to descend or ascend if you have it pulled back. It also has a center feel detent so you know when the ladder is not in motion. Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, HMI and see what kind of graphics we have on here. Um, the first screen is, uh, oh, first of all, at the bottom, you have a navigation bar starting from left to right. Um, you, uh, it, it allows you these blue buttons down the bottom. It allows you to go to your different screens that you have. This main screen is, uh, shows in digital as well as bar graph all of your sensors that are on the dredge. Uh, the very top of the screen shows any alarms that you would have. Um, there are actual alarms that are in real time. If it's red, it's an alarm. If it's displayed in blue, it means that you have acknowledged the alarm through either the push button on the console, the blue push, push button alarm acknowledge, or this alarm acknowledge uh, uh, touch here. Uh, either one will acknowledge the alarm. I put one on the console in case the computer is not running and you hear an alarm, that way you can still acknowledge it. Um, so your alarms, your current alarms will show up there. Um, to the left of the alarm banner, uh, we show the relief valve. The relief valve that we have on here is a cruise uh, flow, control flow type valve. Um, that'll be described in a moment. but. It is shown here and depicted right here as percentage of closed. It's right now 9900% closed. As it opens, you'll see, well, graphically, you'll see that slide gate move um, and you'll see the percentage open. When that percentage is zero, you're 0% uh, uh, closed, basically 100% open. Um, Working our way down, all the center of this graphic shows you the parameters, all of your parameters, and they're in color and the bar graph depicts the same color as shown on there. Operators get used to seeing these uh, at a glance to, to see if they have a problem. They'll know uh, quickly based on uh, getting used to uh, the intensity of these, you know, the level, I should say, um, what you would see in here. Um, we also depict on here, we show the main engine and the aux engine information. We see your RPM, your load percentage, the operating hours, your oil pressure, your coolant temperature, and your battery voltage of each of the engines. Um, and then to the far right bottom, we're showing some other pressures. We show your uh, cutter charge pressure, um, and then you see your stern winch pressures below that. To the left of the bottom there, you have two selectors. Um, one is swing speed and the other is swing mode. Um, you can actually select uh, by touching auto or touching hand. You can, you can select the swing speed or select the swing mode. Um, and we'll discuss them here in a moment when we get on the auto logic screen, how they work. Uh, but you can turn them on and off from here. Um, by the way, the uh, swing mode, which is actually allows you to swing between the two uh, port and the starboard distance, which are entered right here. They can be entered here or from the auto logic screen. Simply touch the number, brings up a, touch, a keypad, and allows you to change that value. That is how far you want to swing 
uh, from the cut line, which we'll be discussing. Um, so you enter a value in there, and the dredge will automatically, if you turn on the swing mode, it will automatically swing that distance in feet to the left, or to the port side of the uh, cut line, and it'll swing this far to the right side of the cut line. It automatically slow and then uh, smoothly reverse direction. When it's in either direction, these arrows here will flash showing you the direction you're swinging. Uh, the very center dial is your tons per hour. It shows your real time tons per hour that you are operating at. Let's bounce over here and take a look at the computer on the left. It has your dredge pack running, which consists of one, two, three, four screens. Um, the colorful screen is known as your map, and it depicts your dredge in real time, and that is a, your dredge to scale. Uh, you can zoom in and zoom out on this screen, um, and you can see a couple vertical lines on the screen as well. And uh, below the map, the colorful map, is a, another graph. You see left side is uh, uh, red, the um, horizontal bar graph, and the right side is green. And there's an arrow on there that moves, and it shows you how far the cutter is from that cut line. Um, so that's very useful information. That information gets uh, relayed to the PLC so I can do the automation as to when to uh, reverse the dredge when you have it in auto swing mode. So coming back to the computer on the right, you can see we've navigated to the auto logic screen. Notice when you're in this screen, and any other screen for that matter, it still shows all of your digital displays that you saw on the main status screen. It just doesn't show you the bar graphs. Uh, additionally, you can't see from here, but above that is the alarm screen as well as your uh, flow control valve to see where your relief valve location is. So they're always depicted regardless of which screen you navigate to. So let's start on this screen. The top left automation feature you have uh, is plug logic and you can see from that selector you can either touch the word disable or enable and uh, you would want to keep that in the enable mode uh, mainly if you're at a sand and gravel plant um, with that fluffy material that you're running at, uh, at fly ash you're probably never going to plug that line so it doesn't matter if you keep it disabled but uh, notice that there's two uh, data entries to the right of the uh, selector. Um, that is your plug setting low velocity and your plug setting high suction. So what happens is, of course, we know we have a relief valve, which we'll talk about in a second, which its settings are to the right of that. Uh, the relief valve um, in some dredges, not necessarily yours, uh, is uh, far enough down uh, where it could get uh, covered by a cave-in. So what the plug logic does, line plug logic does, is it recognizes your velocity. There's something called critical velocity based on your pipe size, the, uh, the pipe length, the pipe diameter that is, the pipe length, um, the friction coefficient of the pipe, the type of material, the density of the material. Um, so we can determine what a uh, low critical velocity is to keep the material flowing. Um, if you get below that critical velocity, that material settles out, then you plug up your line. So without calculating that, typically I set that plug velocity around 12 and a half to 13 feet per second. So if you're traveling at that distance, at that speed or faster, you're probably not going to plug your line. Um, and you typically want to keep around 16, 17 feet per second when you're running, which I believe your pump speed will be uh, when you're running your uh, pump engine at 15 or 1600 RPM. 
So um, all that automation does for the plug logic is recognize if the speed gets below, the velocity gets below uh, the setting that you enter there by touching the number, you can enter the setting, or if you get high suction above the setting, which shown there is 26, what it does is it actually beeps at the operator, it waits about seven seconds and recognizes that the suction relief valve didn't do its job because it's maybe a complete cave-in and it'll stop swinging no matter whether you're swinging in automatic mode or manually remember the depth that it's at raise the ladder automatically and uh, uh, for six feet wait till it clears out recognizes that it's cleared out for 20 seconds, goes back down automatically to the location that it was, and then begins swinging again where, uh, to the speed you were swinging at. Now, because of this automation, anytime we raise the ladder, um, we have a tilt sensor on the dredge. We also have a bow down sensor in the front. So if you're raising the ladder and it is stuck in the mud and it's starting to pull the bow down, it'll stop raising the ladder automatically when that bow down sensor tilts uh, because it has uh, started to float which is physically out uh, near the bow of the dredge uh, or, you've, or the dredge is uh, tilted to a, a certain angle. Um, uh, and also when the ladder is descending back to the location we're looking at cutter pressure. So if we had a slough in of material after the ladder automatically raised and it goes back down and it can't get back down to that same uh, elevation it was, we recognize that by two ways. We, know, we see that the ladder angle doesn't change anymore. We watch that in the PLC code as well as we see that we've got cutter pressure so we know we hit bottom. So we stop descending at that point and then begin our uh, automation swing again. To the right of the plug logic selector is the relief valve. You want to keep that enabled all the time unless you need to do any maintenance on the valve or say for example which we did during commissioning we had to raise the ladder a few times and open the valve to look inside make sure we had service water packing pressure packing water going down the tube. So if you need to manually open or close that valve um, out on the end, your uh, suction relief valve, uh, you can disable the relief valve by that selector and then you can use those two buttons, uh, you hold it, they're maintain buttons, you can either touch the screen and hold it, which sometimes gets tricky because it's a momentary touch screen, or you can grab the keyboard and hold the left click mouse down on either open and close. And as you're holding open and close, you'll actually see um, the uh, percentage in the, uh, on the valve which is displayed at the top of the screen not shown here but you'll see the uh, valve actually closing an animation of it as well as you'll see um, percentage wise of the valves open and close percentage. Now when you do have this relief valve and you're running in an enabled mode um, what it'll do is it'll slam open at your high suction setting It'll go completely open very fast at your high suction setting. It'll also open at your high discharge pressure setting and your low discharge pressure setting. So you can change those to uh, whatever values you need for safety sake so you don't plug your line. Now, when you open up that valve all the way, of course, it's just on off. If it goes open or close, you're going to lose whatever production you have. So this is a control valve. What happens is we also have another setting at the bottom which is called relief valve preact. So you want to set that slightly below what your high suction setting is and the valve will start to stroke open slight amount at that preact valve value and it'll open very slow. If you ever reach the high suction value, it'll open fast, but if you have your preact set well, well, it'll just slightly crack that valve open so that you maintain production, maintain slurry, and maintain sl uh, um, your velocity. Uh, of course, once you get below that preact in your vacuum setting, uh, it'll completely close off. So it's just a, uh, it's a nice proportional valve to keep you in production and keep you from uh, plugging the line. Um, below that, 
to the left. Again, we, we have our selectors for swing mode and swing speed. Those selectors, because you may want to go in and out of those modes often, are also on the main status screen, as we saw before. So you can select those modes from the main status screen or from the auto logic screen. That allows you that so you don't have to keep bouncing back uh, navigating to this screen. However, the set points, the settings for uh, these modes are on this auto logic screen. So the swing mode again allows you to swing between uh, the cut line as we saw which is shown in the dredge pack software and uh, here we can either enter in how far we want to swing port or starboard and as I showed you before you can enter that from the main status screen. Uh, the other option or, or entry you have on the swing mode is your pre-reverse direction. Because we may be coming slamming at high speed into uh, these corners, um, you want to slow the dredge down before you snap a line. So this is the uh, uh, pre-reverse slow distance. And what it means is, say for example, you're trying to swing 40 feet uh, to the left to the port side of that swing line and you've entered 40 uh, for your port distance, 40 minus 6, 34, it will start slowing down at 34 feet and then it'll stop at 40. And then the same thing happens when it comes out of the swing, it'll gradually speed up for 6 feet. So 6 is a good number, I believe I've left that in there, but you can change that whatever you want. That keeps you from uh, jerking the dredge when it automatically slows into the corners. Let's go ahead and take a look at a video that demonstrates the auto swing mode. We put it in auto swing mode. We still see our direction. It is going the port direction. But when we get to 25 feet, it stops, which it did. We're no longer swinging in either direction. And five seconds later, it begins swinging automatically to the starboard direction even though our joystick is still in the port direction. That is because we're in auto swing mode. The joystick is only being used as a speed control right now. So wherever that speed, wherever you put the joystick is the speed that you will swing at. But its direction is being ignored. As you can see, we're now going to the start. And when we get to 20 feet, which we just did, it will stop and begin swinging the other way to 25 feet. So whatever numbers you put in there is how far you will swing along that line, the center line. It's auto swing mode. Let's continue on with the automation. And then below that selector is your swing speed. Uh, swing speed, auto or hand, again, you can select that same selector from the main status. Um, this is, uh, it's going to swing to hunt for material. And, and what that does when you put it in auto, and this worked real sweet when we were out there, um, put it, put you, I think you were running pretty good at about 17 inches of mercury. So we set this at 17. You can enter different numbers, but what it'll do is it'll automatically control the swing speed, um, to, to maintain that 17 inches. If uh, material is falling to it and, and you're getting much more than 17 inches, the dredge will actually stop swinging and wait for that material to clean out. As it starts getting back down around 17 and below, it knows it's cleaned that spot and it'll start gradually speeding up so that uh, unlike an operator that may swing past material, it, when you have an auto swing speed, uh, it will... Uh, it will slow down and get all the material that's there. When it starts dropping off, it'll go hunting for the material. And that works real well. Um, the two values below that, operator entry values, uh, please leave them alone. Um, I mean, I can talk to you over the phone if you need to. That's uh, the proportional integral. Uh, that's how you tune a PID loop. And I've got values in there to keep it nice and smooth. So just uh, mess with the uh, desired vacuum set point. Um, now, the feature to the right of that, the automation feature, is the cruise contour. Uh, that is your auto dig. Uh, it will follow the design that we entered into Dredge Pack. Um, so when you enable that, 
the, you'll see the ladder start going up and down to uh, to follow the design. Now your top entry value is your vertical offset from design target. That's a negative number. So if you want to dig the design pattern, but you want to dig it 10 feet above the actual design, you put a negative 10 in that number. Uh, this works really well. We tried this several times. We got some videos of it working. All these modes, we videotaped them working. Um, the other four points below that, um, the upper limit uh, begins slow, descending. Um, this is, for example, that is at what point, if, if, we're, if we're coming down, say that we're at, 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 you know, 10 feet above the design, and we start coming down, it's going to come down fast. If you want it to go, if you all of a sudden have a zero in the vertical offset, if you put a zero in the vertical offset and you're 10 feet above the design and you enable this, it's going to come, the ladder's going to drop down fast to get down to the design. But at 3.5 feet, it's going to start slowing. Um, so that's what that, that number means, the upper limit to begin slowing, descending. And then we have another number, two, two values below that, is uh, offset to begin slowing as we ascend. So if we dug too deep, which we don't want to do, it'll start slowing. It'll get real fast, anything below 3.5, but it'll, it'll ascend slowly above 3, uh, if it's within that range, 3.5, below the uh, dig, which is something we don't want to see. Um, so the only other value on the screen is below that is your step, your dredge step distance. And that is an entry that the operator can put in and it'll automatically step that distance, step ahead that distance uh, when you're in the center cut if you push the step button. But as described before, that only works if you have your aft uh, stern anchor winches on the, each side in front of your um, dredge to pull it forward. Okay, so if we hit the navigation bar down at the bottom to configuration, we get a configuration screen. And again, as I said before, notice all your parameters are still being displayed in real time above the screen, as are your alarms. So you're not missing any information while you're on this screen. We pretty much set these while we were commissioning, uh, as I got used to the values. These are your alarm limits. So you have an alarm for high pressures. You have several alarms. There's probably 70 different alarms that will display. Um, and uh, these are some of them. Uh, so these are all, it's a data entry screen to allow you to uh, enter what uh, limits you want for your high pressure alarms. And uh, we set them just a little bit above the uh, relief valve, that way you don't get nuisance alarms, but if the relief doesn't work, it'll give you an alarm that you're pulling or uh, too hard. Um, and the bottom on the left there is a ladder up limit switch. Um, if uh, you've got a limit switch in the back near the ladder that senses if the ladder is too high, it'll stop you from raising. Um, if you need to, for some reason, raise above that value, um, then you can uh, uh, push that. Uh, it's a temporary defeat. It's a toggle button, and uh, I think it lasts. It lasts for 60 minutes, and then it'll automatically uh, revert back to being not defeat in case you leave it that way. Uh, to the right of that is your production since last reset, um, and then you click that uh, reset button, touch it, and it'll reset that to zero. Um, you can use that uh, as a, uh, uh, because all your production, by the way, is being recorded in the background in SQL, as well as so is your downtime. So your production is still being recorded and there's production reports. But this is for the operator if he wants to see how much he's done since he last reset it. Um, that does not reset your uh, totals in the database. Now if we go down the bottom and navigate to trends, um, we have multiple trend screens and these are historic trends, meaning that they're being recorded um, all the time. And you have uh, little scroll bars and all underneath each one of them. Works like a VCR. Allows you to zoom in and zoom out, select uh, the starting time, ending time. Now if you navigate to the sensor scaling screen, this is a screen that allows us to enter the range for each transmitter that we have supplied on the dredge. 
These are already entered for what the range is, and if you look at any transmitter that's on the dredge, they're typically stamped with what the range is, 0 to 5,000 PSI, 0 to 200 PSI, 0 to 90 degrees, um, 0 to 30 inches mercury. Um, so if you ever have to change one of the transmitters uh, that I have, uh, say for example, you have in stock or you can only purchase a 0 to 4,000 PSI transmitter, uh, and you replace it with one that used to be a zero to five thousand. You simply go on this screen and you enter in what is stated on the name tag of that transmitter. This allows the PLC, the Programmable Logic Controller, to scale and display the proper values without being off. Okay, we're swinging in automatic mode. Everything is in automatic. We have our swing speed and swing mode in automatic and so is cruise contour is also enabled. <clears throat> you can see our ladder pressure, the purple, going up and down because the uh, it's being automatically controlled. We have good pump speed, we have good density, we have good discharge pressure, good suction pressure, no vacuum because our vacuum meter was bad upon commissioning. <clears throat> We're going to the auto logic screen, take a look at uh, what all we have enabled, what our parameters are set here. Um, right now, we, uh, we have the plug logic disabled. It's not really necessary for this fine material. Uh, auto swing speed, we're trying to pick up 16 inches of mercury, and we're swinging 22 feet and the other way. <clears throat> Here's our uh, relief valve setting, and our cruise contour is set at 6 feet above grade. So it's following the exact grade, and it's swinging all on its own, um, and uh, controlling speed on its own. Um, as well as uh, uh, maintaining the depth of the grade. And we'll take a look over here at the dredge pack computer and we can see uh, our trace line that I talked about how to turn that on before but if you watch it it's slowly swinging um, because we're getting good material so it's waiting in that one spot. 